All right. We have got a vintage Chrissy Chaos in store for you. It is chaos from the moment it starts to the moment it ends. We do it from the swing set. We move around. I talk about being with my dad in Providence in Boston. I talk about uh, Emilio's man bun. We talk about the Prime Minister of Japan. We talk about so many things. It's chaotic. It's fun. It's wild. It's free. We get deep. You're going to love this episode. And if you want to come see me live, which I really believe you should because I have an all-new hour of stand-up material that you you have not heard before if you come see me three four times you have not heard this material go to chrisdcomedy.com for tiki wikis montreal burlington vermont brea california san francisco and chicago on sale patreon.com says christy comedy to become a puerto rican which we come up with a new name for I have a new name for puerto ricans it's in the episode listen to this episode to the end it gets wild as the show goes on enjoy it my friends What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Chrissy Chaos. I am now a swinger. I, first of all, I just got back from Providence, Rhode Island, okay? Chrissy Comedy Connection. I just did a shout-out to the good people of Providence, Rhode Island. Um, woke up at 6 a.m., slept in the same room with Tampa Tony. Tampa Tony was going to come on the podcast, but he hasn't shit in five days. So we needed to start the pod. He still he has literally hasn't taken a dump since the last time he was on this podcast last week. So he's in there. He's actually got um his soap operas on right now because he's saying the sound of the soap opera sometimes makes him shit. We stopped at a Dunkin' Donuts in Providence this morning. I got a sesame seed bagel and an iced coffee at 6.30 a.m. Um, Emilio, the man bun, was in the back seat snoring, and my dad was literally doing breathing exercises, in through his nose, out through his mouth, to try to get his bowels to move, and they have not moved. His bowels are just solid. He's got just a brick of shit in there. Um... It was, let me tell you something, I had a pretty fun weekend. First of all, it's one of those things where sometimes when it rains, it pours. So I sent Pimp the picture, and we can put it up uh, right now in the episode. I had to get a new air conditioner unit, okay? And the guys came on Friday to fix the air conditioner unit. They're up in the attic, and then one of the workers fell through my ceiling, Okay. A worker fell through my attic ceiling, and there's a huge hole. There's a huge hole. Well, and, and, and there's a you know a huge to below huge. It's a small hole. A small Mexican man fell through my ceiling, and he literally hit the floor. I'm not. I wasn't there. I wasn't there at all. All I I I got a call from the foreman saying one of my workers fell through your ceiling. I said, what kind of asshole? walks through an unfinished attic and walks through the beams. I know absolutely nothing about construction, and even I would know not to walk. I wouldn't even let my one-year-old daughter, Violet, who weighs two pounds, walk through the beams in an unfinished attic. So the guy falls through the attic, okay? So I'm talking to the guy, whatever. Talk to Jazz, talk to Jerry. They're like, everything's fine, whatever. All of a sudden, the guy calls me and says, oh, my worker's neck hurts, oh. okay? So I say, okay, that's fine, whatever. I, I, I'm in Providence. I, I'm like, I can't deal with this, whatever. Five minutes, late, five minutes later, I call Jazz, and I'm like, the worker's saying his neck hurts. He goes, she goes, yeah, he said that to us too. She goes, and then Jerry asked the worker in Spanish, do you have your papers? And the worker <laughs> said, yo no sé. And then Jerry pointed to the attic and he said, trabajo. And then the worker finished the job because that's what it is. Game recognize game. You want to try to game someone in this family? Maybe you can game me. Maybe you can game Jazz. Maybe maybe you can game the kids. You ain't going to game T.T. Jerry. She hit them with, do you have papel? <laughs> Yo, where are they? Pop papers. No, get back to work, dickhead. You fell through the ceiling. Listen, if you fell through the ceiling in Juarez or Mexico City, that's one thing. But you fell through the ceiling in Staten Island, okay? So if you fall through the ceiling in Staten Island, a passport, a United States passport, better fall out of your back pocket or you can't sue me, okay? So that was one. 
That so we escaped that one, but I'm still got hit for six grand. I got hit for six grand with the hole in the ceiling and the air conditioning unit. So I got hit. Friday morning I get hit. So I'm okay. You know what? We start off today. It's Friday morning. What can you do? Sometimes you get hit. Two hours later, I get a call from Vinny. She goes, Where is your car insurance card? I said, Que paso? She said, Where's your car insurance card? I said, in the glove compartment of the car. Why? She goes, Jerry and I just got into a car accident. I said, I, Dios mio. I said, what happened? She said, well, we were at a light. We were at a light. And Jerry was in the crosswalk. So because he didn't want to inconvenience pedestrians walking through the crosswalk, he put the car in reverse and then backed up. And as he was backing up, a guy was coming from behind him and hit the brakes too late and smashed into the back of the infinity. So then I'm on the phone with this guy who's some Russian mobster guy, and he's like, I don't have time for this. I have to get on flight. I was like, let me just Venmo you right now. Let me quick pay you. What do you think a rough estimate is? Let me send a picture of it to my guy. Shout out Roger, my car guy. And we'll get this taken care of. He said, no, we got to go through insurance. I was like, since when are Russians, since all of a sudden now Russians want to do things the legal way, when did this happen? I thought they were the kings of doing stuff the illegal way. Now Russians want to be proper? That, that makes me think something's going on that the Russians know about. Just like the Chinese knew COVID was coming, I feel like the Russians know because now all of a sudden they're starting to do things legally, and I don't know why that's happening. All of a sudden, a legal Russian scares me. A Russian who wants to do things by the book, it scares me. It makes me think they're up to something. So he now... We got a little estimate on that from my car guy. That's another four grand. So by the time it was 2 p.m. Friday, I already got hit for 10 fucking grand. 10 grand I got banged out for, okay? My father still didn't shit. So then the day is going on. I got my shows, you know, uh, 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 Friday night. I got two shows Friday night and Comedy Connection, great. Friday night, I decided to go out. Friday night, I said, we're in Providence, uh, after the shows, I had a tequila, and you know me, when I drink tequila, <laughs> I go and look for filming locations from the movie Something About Mary, because it was filmed in Providence. So I go to the bar, I wind up at the bar, where they film Something About Mary, one of the scenes where they're sitting by the water having lunch with, um, you know, the guy, Woogie, who itches his head. They ha That scene, I went to that bar with Man Bun Emilio, Started drinking tequilas, and now this is Friday night. This happens at 11.58, so I got hit for 10 grand. I got hit for 6 grand in the morning, 4 grand in the afternoon, and then the nightcap, the beautiful, <laughs> beautiful, lovely little nightcap is I was drinking, and I sat down, and I was wearing my Lululemon pants, and I forgot to unzip my pocket. I forgot, to, I forgot to zip my pocket, and I left my pocket unzipped, and I go to sit back in a chair. My wallet falls out of my pocket into the river. So it was one of those days where I just said, I give up. I don't care anymore, and I just made a decision. I said, fuck it. Now I have no wallet. I have no money. I don't care. I don't care at all, and I guess what? I had, I, and the only positive is my fitness pal... At 11.59, I still had 700 calories left. I was eating clean, and I ran. I did laps around the Capitol. But because I just said, you know what? Screw it. I have no money. The only way that I can eat is on my phone. So you know what I did. Gotta go to Moe's. Domino's. Gotta go to Moe's. I ordered not one, but two Domino's pizzas, half pepperoni, half banana pepper, size medium, cheesy breadsticks, and brownie bites, and a two-liter bottle of Diet Pepsi back to my hotel back to my hotel in downtown Providence, and I ate the whole thing. And I'm still swollen. I'm telling you, the next morning I woke up, and I shit, I shit for my father. That's, <laughs> my dad was listening to me just rip shits, and he was like, I've never been so jealous of another man in my life. So that was my Friday. That was my Friday. And listen, it's what it is. Sometimes you go through days like that. Sometimes it happens. And I got no regrets. That's the thing is, you know, when life hands you lemons, what do they say? You make lemonade, and that's what I did. I made lemoncello, is what I did. <laughs> I started doing shots of lemoncello, and I honestly don't care that I lost my wallet. 
I don't care that I got to pay for the hole in my ceiling and probably will be sued by a Mexican. I don't care that the Russian mafia is after me. I don't care. My family's safe, my ceiling's safe, and my wallet's safe on the bottom of the river in Providence. So... <laughs> It's fine. I'll get a new license. I'll get new credit cards. The funniest part of it to me is that your father, with a womb full of shit, went to the Boston Red Sox game. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. So how about this? So my dad, we go to the Boston Red Sox game, Yankees-Red Sox in Fenway. First time me and my dad went to Fenway together. First time we've seen the Yankees. We've only seen the Yankees on the road twice. Once in Camden Yards in Baltimore, Great Ballpark, and then Fenway Park on Thursday night. It was a fantastic game. Yankees won 6-5. It was great. And then in, I have pictures of this, and I'll send, I'll pimp, I'll send you the pictures. You can put, put it up right now. I pictured this. The woman in, that was sitting in front of my father was lights out drunk, sitting next to her husband. Her name was Colleen. She was like a standard, just Boston woman. <clears throat> you know, just, she sounded like, she sounded like Ted from the movie. She sounded like the, the, the stuffed animal, Ted, Mark Wahlberg's Ted. That's what she sounded like. She literally was Ted if she was a woman. If Ted had a pussy, it was this woman. So Ted and, and uh, Colleen and her husband, who might have been mildly retarded. I don't know if he had special needs or not, but he was the nicest guy. And they were sitting in front of us. For nine innings, this woman was holding my father's hand, rubbing his knee, she was rubbing his diabetes socks. My, they were flirting for nine innings. My dad was telling me to call his wife, my stepmom. He was like, let her know I still got it. Look at this. <laughs> and he was having me take pictures and videos and send it to my stepmom. This, and by the way, he was, they were holding hands, right? He felt that. She had his hand on his knee for like three innings. I was like, Dad, what about the hand on the knee? He goes, what are you talking about? I was like, she had her hand on your knee. He goes, really? I was like, you didn't feel that? He was like, I, don't, I can't feel my legs anymore. I was like, yeah, because you haven't shit in a week. <laughs> it's just starting to, para it's starting to just, you know, paralyze you. He literally, then we, you know, we go to the game. We stayed at the Liberty Hotel, which is an old jail cell, um, which was fun. Uh, Lenny Clark, the great comedian, Lenny Clark told me a great story about the Liberty Hotel. If you don't know it in Boston, I would suggest if you go into Boston, try out that hotel. Um, he so it used to be an old jail cell and it was still a jail, like in the 1970s when Lenny Clark, uh, was still doing comedy. And he said in the summers in Boston summer nights, you know, when, you know, fist fights, alcohol fueled, you know, fights at Fenway, whatever. They, so many people would get arrested on the weekends that they would just start loading, they would just start letting the prisoners just sit in the prison yard, which was outside in front of the hotel, which is now a parking lot. It used to be like just have a wall, and the prisoners would be right out there, and you'd be able to hear them. And Lenny Clark, he said, would get drunk after he was doing comedy shows and buy sandwiches and start throwing sandwiches over the fence for the prisoners and watching them, listening to them fight over the sandwiches. And he said one time he was throwing sandwiches over the fence and he got arrested and thrown in the pen with the prisoners. But he said he went in with like a bag full of sandwiches. So I always just thought that was a good story. That's probably not true. Um, I don't know. But I mean, back in the day, shit was just wild. Re really think no security cameras? People mm. were wild. No, I'm kidding. I believe it. Lenny Clark was, Lenny Clark is um, one of my favorite comics of all time, um, truly is. Um, he, I got the opportunity to do uh, Comics Come Home, it's called in, in Boston. It's the Boston Garden. Uh, you know, uh, everybody was on, you know, they always have a new guy. So this was 2015, 2016. I was the new guy, but, you know, Jimmy Fallon and Louis C.K. and Bill Burr and Lenny Clark and all these legends, Ray Romano, right? It's, they're on it. They're all on it. And I got to share the, the green room, a green room with Lenny Clark. Everybody, all the comics had like a little room, but Lenny Clark, because he's like the mayor of Boston, we sat in the Boston Celtics actual locker room. Wow. And I just randomly got picked to share the green room with him. I was like, this is cool. And he's like, yeah, you know, and, and we're talking. And so we're sitting in the green room and all of a sudden, like these criminals come into the green room, like Boston, like Whitey Bulger, criminals and it's so cool because they're like what's up kid how you doing and I, you could just know that they're criminals you could tell they got like they're like mafia guys and you know whatever winter hill gang irish guys all love lenny lenny's laughing introducing me this fucking kid crash yeah he's a fucking good kid you know like that <laughs> they're going crazy i'm like this is awesome they leave two minutes later i swear to god 
the Boston police commissioner and the top police brass come in and are hanging out with Lenny laughing just like the criminals were. And Lenny's doing the same thing. He's like, you got to meet Chris. He's a good kid. Watch his back. He's a good kid, even though he's from New York. And I'm like, dude, this guy is the best. Like, literally just plays both sides better than anybody. He literally, Lenny was going to play my father in my CBS sitcom before Chaz came in. And Lenny was like, I was like, can you do a uh, New York accent? He goes, I never do a New York accent. <laughs> I was like, but my father's from New York. He's like, well, if I get the pot, he's got to be from Boston. <laughs> and I was like, you know what? Maybe he will be. Fuck it. Who gives a shit? You know? Um, I love the New England area. I, I love it so much. I, you know, being in Providence was amazing. But then I went to Newport, Rhode Island. You ever go to Newport? No, I don't think so. So Newport, Rhode Island is like their Hamptons, right? It's like their Hamptons, but it's got a not, it's like also like colonial. It's like the colonial, it's like how George Washington would summer in, in Newport. And it's just so funny because when you go there, it's like your standard, white, you know, lobster rolls, you know, Trulies, khaki shorts, boat shoes. You realize when you leave Newport, Rhode Island, you realize why people hate white people. Oh, yeah. You understand this is why whites get a bad rap. It's because the Newport, Rhode Island people. But what I, what I want to do so bad in my life is this summer, and I'm going to do it because I love Newport, Rhode Island. I love the people in Newport, Rhode Island. I love actually Rhode Island. Rhode Island is my state. It's a little state. It's a baby state, but I'm telling you, Rhode Island doesn't get enough credit. It is an awesome state, the ocean state. I loved it. I love the whole New England area, but Rhode Island, really. I, what I want to do is go back, maybe soon, maybe this weekend, go back to Newport, Rhode Island, and bring T.T. Jerry and walk T.T. Jerry through Newport, Rhode Island while T.T. Jerry is smoking a Newport cigarette. That's what I want. <laughs> I want to bring Newports to Newport. And by the way, that's my new name for Puerto Ricans. I'm just going to call them Newports. Oh so if you if you if you hear me say on this show, I did a show last night, and there were some beautiful Newports in the front row. You know who I'm talking about. I'm only going to say it once. Clip it. You should uh, have Newport merch. No. <laughs> Are we going to do Newport merch? That's so funny. Are we going to do Newport merch? <laughs> I should just do. If I just made a shirt with that had Newport on it, I mean that literally. Fuck it. Why, why not? not? Yeah. I'm surprised. Why isn't this? Why doesn't Newport Island or whatever Newport Beach? Why don't they sell shirts that just say Newport with the Newport logo on it? They have to be out there selling those. That's too funny. There has to be Newport. That cigarette company has to make merch. Oh yeah, I would. Yeah, I assume so. They I have should, to. I should text uh, um, my new uh, merch guy, Vinny. We brought Vinny back. I should text. <laughs> I should text my man, my man, Vinny. Um, and have him bring Newport. I, I should ask him about Newport merch. Your life really is a circus. It's a circus. It's a circle. It's a cir Listen, some people have the circle of life. I have the circus of life. That's how I live. That's how I live. Dude, and, and um, you know, but I got to be honest, man. I am so, I feel like an energy that's so good because I am doing, com the, 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 the hour that I'm working on now, feels like the material and the way I've always wanted to talk. It, it, they say it takes 10 years, 12 years to find your voice. You know, you got to bang out some specials uh, or bang some things out, make a lot of mistakes as I've been making, as I've made and will continue to make to finally find your voice. And I got to be honest, right now, the material that I'm doing, if you come see me, I'm the happiest and most proud of this material that may not be ready necessarily to show anyone, you know, put on TV or anything for a year. But if you come see me live, I'm telling you, you're, I believe you're getting the best version of me comedically that I've ever been. I feel like in the zone last night in Providence, these last four shows in Providence, I felt like I'm just saying what I want to say, and that's and and you know, and I believe it's funny, and in the audience definitely having a good time. But I finally feel like it's not even about the audience. I want them to have a good time. I feel like I'm proud of this material, whether you laugh at it or not. And that's a different feeling that I've ever had in my career. Because normally I'd be like, oh, if the crowd doesn't laugh, it must not be a good joke. But now I'm like, well, if they don't laugh, maybe it's just because I'm not saying it right yet. But let me keep working on it and hammering it out. So what I did was, what I've been doing 
is now the new special, which we're going to probably call Right Intention, Wrong Move, is really all about fatherhood. It's all stories about my dad that you probably haven't heard. I went deep and kind of Or maybe you have heard them told on podcasts, but when you tell them in stand-up, it's different, and it's a different point of view. The thing is, is you can do material about the same thing, about the same moments in your life, but if you change the point of view of it, it's different jokes, and it's a totally different punchline, different thing. And I talk about, it almost is like, in a way, I'm almost doing my version of a one-man show now, which is kind of something I've always wanted to do because I'm such a big Colin Quinn fan, and that's what he does. So this is kind of like this special, this, this hour that I'm working on, it actually has a theme. It really does have like a theme now. And it's kind of like me being a father, me learning how to be a father through the looking back and the flashbacks of what my father was like. And it's very, but it's got a lot of heart and it's stories you, you, you haven't heard. And then it's, you know, kind of bridging a gap now between how TT Jerry and my dad's friendship is blossoming and kind of just like kind of, I think getting a look inside what an actual typical, let's say American family is like, because I do think I have that where it's like, you know, you watch the news long enough, you get brainwashed, whatever, but that's not reality. I think what I'm saying now is speaking, I hope to like that huge silent majority of people. That's what it is. So I'm proud of it. If you know, I I got, yeah, no, I'm, dude, you're on fire right now. It's actually kind of cool. I've always wanted to ask a comic, like, you're entering your peak, right? You're on fire. Yeah. And the next five years, you're going to explode. Which is crazy that you say that, because it's, it's interesting, because I feel positive and good, but it's like the Patreon has stalled, the podcast numbers are, like, just not going up as much as we like, but but yet I still do feel just so positive, because I'm like, I just know it's going to go up. Dude, you know what's crazy? I was hanging out with comics last night who were like, 2016 to 2019, Tim was at an open mic with me. Tw- three years later, Tim is the biggest person on the planet. I know. So, all that's bullshit. It's no, just bullshit. no, that's what I'm saying. Like, but even that, like, I feel like, like tomorrow, you know, we're going. Uh, I'm going to L.A. I'm going to do a Volkswagen commercial. The Jimmy Kimmel show is happening. I'm going to host. I spoke to Jimmy Kimmel uh, last week, um, and um, so all these positive things are happening. But it's weird. Like, I'm in a place now where it's like, listen, I want obviously the the Patreon to continue to rise. I want the podcast numbers to continue to go up. But I know the fans who stick with me will stick with me. And I feel, though, like even if the numbers continue to go down, maybe it's out of my control. Maybe it's because it's Biden's America. Maybe it's because of the economy. Maybe it's who knows. I'm like I'm happy with the product I'm putting out, though. Like I feel the best I felt in my career now. Like I feel like, oh, I'm at the prime. I'm coming up. So whether the numbers reflect that or not is like insignificant to me. So it's kind of like a good freeing feeling where it's like, I don't care if I, I want people. Of course, you always want it, but it's like, I just hope the people that are listening are enjoying it. You know, I think, that, dude, it's yeah. inevitable now. You can, you can let go now. You know what I mean? It's I feel no like I can fight. Yeah, even with my social media, like letting go of Twitter has been great. Um, Facebook, you know, I, I post here and there. But even Instagram now, I've been flirting with the idea of maybe like even having just V, let, yeah, just dude. let it go because it's like I'll promote it. But it's like you want to come see me. You want to come listen to the pod or come see me on the road because I feel like that's the best version of me. Like I don't want to feel like, oh, now I got to come up with a promo. I got to, oh, I got to be active. No. It's too much. It's like I'm. I feel like I'm getting better as a person and as a comic by just being in my life and not worrying about oh, to have to document all this. And I like the comics who are not available on social media. Yeah, it's kind of like, like that's oh, become. No, they're they're living a life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's kind of like cool now, where I'm like, yeah, I, I'm again just being happy, being happy with me. And then so we got that, that and then Pimp's gonna be coming with us to Montreal now, yeah, July. We got Burlington, Vermont, July 27th. Go get tickets, christycomedy.com. July 28th, a live Chrissy Chaos in Montreal. We are doing a live Chrissy Chaos July 28th in Montreal. I believe it's 5 p.m. July 29th, I'm headlining Club Soda in Montreal. These tickets are almost gone for everything, so go christycomedy.com, get Tiki Wikis. Um, and then August 17th to the 20th, Brea Improv, California. This is all new material. I really want you guys to see this hour. And then September, we got the Chicago Theater and San Francisco. So those are the uh, cities right now. Are you nervous about... Being a spokesperson, that must be weird. Magic Spoon, I love it. Keto-friendly cereal, 13 to 14 grams of protein, 4 to 5 net carbs, 140 calories a serving. I love Magic Spoon. In Providence last night, a fan came up to me, said that 
because of these Magic Spoon ads. He is a lifelong subscriber to Magic Spoon, so you should be too. It literally tastes like the cereal that we used to eat when we were kids, but now that cereal will make us fat. It's loaded with sugar. We don't ha we can't eat that kid friend. We can't eat the cereal we used to eat as kids. We're adults now. So Magic Spoon is the way to go. It is a keto friendly, grain free, soy free, healthy alternative to cereal, and it tastes amazing. Cocoa, fruity, frosted, peanut butter. The new blueberry muffin flavor is my favorite flavor of all time. I love Magic Spoon, and you will too. Go to magicspoon.com slash chaos. Put in the promo code chaos. You're gonna get five dollars off your order. That's magicspoon.com slash chaos, promo code chaos. $5 off your order. Magic Spoon, thank you for sponsoring this episode. I love you. I want to tell you about an app right now that helps you earn cash back when you're buying gas, which is through the roof right now, buying groceries, which you need, or dining out. Upside, it's called Upside, and it's a great name because there's only Upside with this app. It literally is so easy to use, okay? It's not one of those apps that's too good to be true. Um, I've used it, and it works. It's a no-brainer upside it helps you earn cash back when you make purchases buying some of these things that we need every day okay so um in comparison to credit cards or loyalty programs you can earn three times more cash back with upside you can cash out anytime to your bank account paypal or an e-gift card for amazon and other brands and you are earning more than uh upside users are earning more than a million dollars every week that's probably why they got a four point uh star rating on the app store that's probably why. Now, all you have to do is download the free, capital, free, Upside app and use the promo code CHAOS to get $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. That's $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more using the promo code CHAOS. You literally have nothing to lose. It's only Upside. Um, and then August 17th to the 20th, Brea Improv, California. This is all new material. I really want you guys to see this hour. And then September, we got the Chicago Theater and San Francisco. So those are the uh, cities right now. Are you nervous about being a spokesperson? That must be weird. So it's interesting. Are you like rehearsing in the mirror? Well, no. <laughs> well, no, it's weird. What's happened now, what's happened now is I'm at this place. And again, this is, it's, I mean, yeah, it's specifically about entertainment. But this is like just a life thing where... Whatever you are in your in your career, you know, whatever career, type of career or job, you know, you may have as, as you're listening to this, I'm at a place now where the Volkswagen commercial, the Volkswagen people and Jimmy Kimmel's people and Jimmy Kimmel himself said the same thing to me. They were like, the Volkswagen people said, listen, this is your commercial. You, it, this lives and dies with you. So we have a script, but really we hired you for you. Your personality is going to make or break this. And the same thing with the Kimmel. They're like, Jimmy was like, you tell me what you want. You tell me how we're going to do this, and that's how we're going to do it. We hired you to, like, lead this ship where it used to be. I'm just a hired thing. You're going to tell, you're going to read the words as we tell them. You're just cast in this. Where this is like, now it's being formulated for me. Like, they made this, and they were like, "We're this is for Chris. You earned it, dude. Which is crazy, because I haven't been in this situation ever in my career, ever in my life. But that's why I'm bringing it up as, you know, wherever you are. Like, you want th you want to be a part of everything as you're building something in whatever career you have. You don't want to – you don't really want to have a job. If you have a job, that's fine, and you got to make ends meet. But really, the beautiful feeling is when you're doing things like – when you're kind of flowing with everyone and everyone's doing things in conjunction with you and you're all creating something together, it's different. It's almost like there's, you would think, well, now there's more pressure on me because when the big dog at Volkswagen or when Jimmy Kimmel himself says this lives and dies with you, but there's actually less pressure on me because I'm like, I know my abilities. I know who I am. So I'm just going to be me. And I feel like if I'm just me, then it can't really fail because oh, yeah. it's me. And I'm, yeah. you know, I, I mean, you know, I, I it's it'll be fine. Like, I'm, they're not asking me to be somebody I'm not. Where a lot of times you do these jobs and they do ask you to be somebody you're not. They ask you to become the person they want you to become. But now. Yeah, I remember a show you had. I know. I remember a show I had that we can't talk about that I actually just want to say that I really enjoy that network. Woo! Um, and uh, good people there. And um, it is funny, though, because, you know, the, the people at, at my new show, they were like, yo, we kind of respect the fuck out of you for doing what you're doing. For just 9-11. Yeah. You just yeah. flew right into Yeah. That. But it is, it kind of, that's another good lesson, too, with life. If you don't like the, it, I feel like as human beings, 
we sometimes will be living our existence and not happy in our existence, but then we'll be so scared to walk through that door because like, oh, what if it's worse through that door? And it's like, but you don't like your present. You don't like what this is in. So isn't walking through that door a good enough chance? It could be worse or it could be better and you could be free. You know you hate. It's either I continue to sit here and hate my life forever or take a chance and go through that door and maybe it's worse or maybe it's better. But like, wouldn't you want to take the chance that maybe it's better? So I think too, when you're just like, so I think that's what's happening where I was like, you know what? I don't like where I'm at. I'm going to take a risky move right now and just walk through that door. And now I've been walking through that door and I'm realizing more doors are opening when I went through the door, but you have to like, you know, do some stuff. You know, you have to kind of go through, you can't be scared that it's not going to work out. If you already feel like your situation isn't working out, you genuinely have nothing to lose. I'm realizing then you really got to play life, this game of life, like you got nothing to lose. You have mm -hmm. to play it that way. Even if you do have something to lose, you have to tell yourself, even if I lose it, I'm going to find a way to win it back or win something else that's equal in value to this. That's how I think you got to play this freaking game. Well, you got to, it's a board game. You have to have pieces on the board. You can't just stay home and not have anything on the board. Yeah. What do you think is going to happen? Yeah. And my father was talking to me about in the car this morning when we were driving. He was like, life is also about little victories. He was like, you know, sometimes you have so many things in your life that you forget how much you have. And then like, a victory, which once was a victory, would feel like a loss to you. So you have to under, you have to always remember where you came from. Like my dad said, he goes, uh, he go, I was like, what would be a victory for you today? He goes, to take a shit. All I, <laughs> he goes, all I have to do today is take a shit, and then I won the day. He was like, so that's, he goes, but he goes, he told me, he's like, I'm actually happy where I'm at in my life, where literally my day is made if I shit. He goes, that's a freeing feeling where I don't need anything. I don't need a million bucks, okay? I don't need to eat a good sandwich. I don't need a woman. I don't need a trip to Italy. All I got to do is shit. He goes, so tell me, who's richer, me or you? And I was like, honestly, you. He goes, when all I got to do is shit to feel like a million bucks, where well, you need a million bucks to feel like a million bucks. Dude, who's going to walk in the bathroom after that? <laughs> oh, my God. I actually, I mean... I was, for Patreon. Yeah, for Patreon. Oh, dude, how do you want to let's do the, the Tony D shit sweepstakes at <laughs> patreon.com slash Christy Comedy. Dude, I mean, he literally could you imagine not like yesterday we went to this restaurant, uh, this breakfast place in uh, Providence called Julian's, which is like everybody was telling me Julian's, Julian's, Julian's. We went there, it was phenomenal. And all my dad could eat because he's just he's just he's up to he's up to th his throat and shit. If she could just eat some egg whites and some wheat toast. I was like, doesn't this suck? Dude, this is probably a, not a good thing. That's what I he said. Go to the doctor. I was like, Dad, don't, don't you get toxic shocks? Syndrome? Well, that's what I said. I said, Dad, like you can't just keep filling up with shit. And he was like, This happens to me once every three months. And I was like, Wait a second, what is the longest you never took a shit for? He said, Two weeks. I was like, What? The real well, gas crisis. I know. Well, I know. And then sleeping with my dad, it was like, you know, sleeping in the same room as my dad. It's like every morning at 530, I'd be woken up to him just blowing gas into the toilet bowl. And him just got, oh. he, this morning he was banging on the way. He's like, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what happens with life. But it's, it was interesting how, like, you know, he said that where he was like, who's, who's, who's richer? Me or you, when literally all my all I got to do today is shit, and I'll be the happiest guy on the planet. And I was like, and he was like, you got to make your life smaller. He thinks he he was telling me he's like, I think your goal should be smaller. He goes, you know, you want to shoot for the star, you want to win Emmys, you want to have the biggest podcast in the world, you want to have ten specials. He's like, maybe that'll happen, maybe it won't. He's like, I think your goal should be smaller. He goes, I want you. To, he told me he's like, I want you to set forty eight hour goals. I want you to have a goal every two days, and you get it. Whatever that goal is, I want you to have a fitness goal. I want you to have a mind goal, and I want you to have a career goal. He said, "So fitness, maybe it's you know, you did uh, you know ten pull ups at a pop on Monday. Well, by Wednesday, I want you to do eleven. Uh, you know, he said comedy goals. He was like, I want you to write a new minute of material or a new bit in two days, and then mind goals. He's like, you know, I want you to meditate every day, something like that. Small forty. He believes in that. He's like forty eight hours no, I like goals, that. I like that. and he's like, you know, because he's like sometimes when I listen to you, he goes, you know, you're doing so well. You have all these things going on, but sometimes, you know, where when I was driving, you know, we were talking because Amelia was sleeping in the back with his fucking man bun on the seats. Um, I love that. I love that. I'll literally. You know, Vinny will go drive the car today, and she'll be like, "What bitch was in the back seat?" I'm like, "Emilio." <laughs> um, so, so, uh, but he was like, "You know, you talk sometimes like you don't have nothing." 
And he was like, I, I don't, you, you, you've come so far because he's like, your goals are, you know, your, your, you, you, your goals, you, you've put them too far out there. He was like, I don't believe the guys that say shoot for the stars. He was like, fuck that. Don't shoot for the stars. He was like, shoot for the roof. I, was I kind like, of agree. I was like, there's a hole in it. It's too much. There's a hole in it. That yeah. hole, by the way. I mean, is that still there? It's just a hole. No. Well, they. Well, so they. So on then. So they sanded. They sanded the uh, the the roof, right? But they were up in the. So so they sanded it, and they were going to hold paint it and everything like that. So then, of course, when here. Oh, I forgot. I add to the story. So then they, you know, they, they the worker falls through the roof. They get back up there, whatever. Then they were working up there, you know, unsupervised or whatever for whatever five six hours. They got to patch a hole. They got to put an air conditioning unit up. All that stuff. Then all of a sudden, uh, Vinny calls me yesterday morning. She goes, uh, your pinky ring, your Chrissy pinky ring is missing oh, from wow. the bathroom. It's missing. And I was like, uh, is it? And then T.T. Jerry was like, let me tell you something. That worker that they brought over there to fix the hole, he was a fucking crackhead. I was like, how do you know he's a crackhead? She was like, because I know crackheads. She goes, I know I can smell a crackhead. I was like, were you doing crack with this man? She was like, maybe. <laughs> um, I w she was like, he's a crackhead. He stole that ring. She's gonna work for ice. Dude. I know, and I was like, and I was so so. Then this guy was gonna come over and paint the ceiling and finish it up. And Jazz was like, no one's allowed to come in the house. So I had to call him from Providence, like just leave the paint outside. So now I'm gonna have to fucking do it. Oh, that's great. Or film me, that. We'll oh film that. God. That'll be on the Patreon. Maybe we should start doing. What a disaster. I know. Chrissy renovations. Chrissy rent. Well, no, I'm I'm legally not allowed to do a renovation show. <laughs> <laughs> so we can't film it. <laughs> the fucking mess. Uh, um, but. Yeah, so so um any history out there in on the road? Oh my god, in Providence, yeah, the um, Montreal probably has good history. Oh, Montreal, so Montreal, what we're going to do is so I guess when will you get there? What cuz you have they to give booked, them your info and shit. My, yeah, I did that. Oh, they booked uh, your flight already. Yeah, I don't know whenever you guys are going. Okay, no, yeah. because we're in Burlington the day before. <sighs> Whatever, but you're gonna fly right to Montreal. Whatever the hotel. So then we'll yeah. meet you and because we go to Burlington that Wednesday the 27th to do higher ground uh, in, in in Burlington, and then we're gonna drive to Montreal that morning. Got it. And then and then you could fly, drive back with us if you want, or fly back whatever you want, whatever's we'll easiest for you. I figured I was just gonna play it by. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Play it soft and loose, uh, like my dad's <laughs> asshole. Um, he wishes. He's poor asshole, dude. Dude, and he's been taking like Ducalax and like stool softeners, and it's just not working. It's just he keeps just because every time you eat when you don't shit, you're just adding layers on top. Dude, should we go in there and give him an, an enema? I, an that's enema what I was. A, I was. That's what I was wondering yesterday. I was like, do I have to? Am I gonna have to get up there with a rubber glove? <laughs> gonna have to douche your dad and just enema this guy like he's Sybil. Um, so, so um, you know, but but the history in Montreal, I'm looking forward to because, dude, have you ever been to Montreal? Yes. You have. Okay. Because yes. Canada, dude, Quebec is such an interesting place for me. It's got an identity crisis. It's Canada. They speak French, and the Queen of England's on their money. I'm like, dude, you guys are fucking trans. And they're proud of French fries. They're proud of French fries and poutine. It's just dust. They're, they're like, trans. they're like, they're like, oh yeah, our national dish is French fries and then old cheese. I'm like, if my dad eats a plate of po poutine and still doesn't shit, he's not human. <laughs> So we're gonna go. What, dude? What I love to do in Montreal when we get that going? No, he's not oh. gonna go. He's gonna be back in Florida. He he was supposed to stay until the first week of August, but he literally made it. He's leaving uh, three weeks early because he got a doctor's appointment for his asshole. So he's like, I gotta go to the doctor. I was like, Yeah, dude. Oh and uh, and he's gonna get a knee replacement because he just can't walk. Holy like every time he walks now, he just falls. Yeah, how do you do with the baseball game? That's what I was it was about. tough because Fenway Park, you know, nineteen eight, you know, was yeah. built in the nineteen hundreds or whatever. So. He, uh, you know, but we got him down to, 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 you know, the seats and, and everything was good. And, um, and it was cool to see, uh, you know, the, you know, some of the fans at, at Fenway Park yelling out Tampa Tony it was cool. Um, but, um, but with Montreal, what we got to do is go to old Montreal, old Montreal. What's, what's awesome about if you live like in the Northeast, what's mind blowing to me about Montreal is when you drive from New York City to Montreal, it takes about roughly five to six hours. It's a beautiful drive up to the Adirondack Mountains. If you ever get a chance to do it, do it. Like I know it's an hour flight, but you know, by the time you go through customs and all that, I feel like it's a five hour trip, six hour trip, no matter which way you slice it. So driving up there, what's insane is once you get up to the Adirondack Mountains, first of all, it's amazing. <coughs> Second of all, so many bugs smash your windshield. <coughs> I think I just swallowed a bug. Hold on. <laughs> what the fuck? I genuinely think I just swallowed a bug. I'm not even kidding. <coughs> uh, 
You want some Heimlich? <laughs> Did it to Chaz. <coughs> I'm not even choking on anything. <laughs> the fuck? I think I swallowed a bug. Maybe you're possessed. That'd be great. So what's great about driving up is when you are about 30 miles outside of the Canadian border in Quebec, uh, 30 miles outside the Canadian border in New York, all the signs for like exit are in French in New York. It'll say sortie, which is exit, (coughs) or all the storefronts will have you know, whatever the name of it is in English, and then under it, the French translation, because so many people in upstate New York by that border speak French, which is wild. You're like, you almost feel like you're going to like a time portal. And then you're driving. And one time I drove right to old Montreal. I didn't, because the hotel wasn't ready yet. So I drove right to old Montreal. And then I was like, dude, in the same car, I feel like I just drove from New York to Paris because you're in a city that's like ancient looking and everyone's speaking French. The potato chips are in French. Everything's in fucking French. I what, love it. I what, think French is my favorite accent. What I want to do, what I wish we had time to do, is go from Montreal to Quebec City. I want to see Quebec City because I heard Quebec City is like old Montreal. Because old Montreal is just a section in Montreal. Then you got the, you know, Montreal is all also, like cobblestone, right? It's all cobblestone. Yeah. It's all beautiful. But it's just a small section of, of, of the city of Montreal. Because then, Mont- you know, it's got dirt bags, fucking strip clubs. It, you know, it gets dirty and seedy Montreal, which I like. Where I heard Quebec City is just the whole city is like old Montreal. But I heard there, once you go into like Quebec, Quebec, you have to speak French. They will not speak English to you. They're like, go fuck yourself. Where Montreal, they will speak English to you. I think the rule is in Quebec, I think this is actually a law. And tell me if I'm wrong. But I think this is actually a law where if you are a worker in Quebec, say you're working at a restaurant, and I walk in, you have to say like, bonjour, and say something, and talk to me in French, and then Only if I respond like hello or in English can you then start speaking English. But if you don't if you don't address someone in French first, you can get like a ticket or a fine for that. I think that's a wild rule, dude. Isn't that a wild rule? Well, Canada find the comedian for just talking shit. Canada's a fucking crazy place, dude. You better be careful up there, man. Knowing you, I know you get arrested, dude. What about the state of the world? I mean, the ex Japanese prime minister got assassinated, dude. Bro, there was a drive by in Soho. (laughs) Like a full drive by in Soho. Oh my God. The Roosevelt's. You know all those shirts that I wear, the shirt that I wore on Joe Rogan, all the button downs that I wear, all the floral prints and all the crazy shirts? It's the Roosevelt's. People are asking me all the time, where do you get that shirt? Oh, where'd you get that shirt? The Roosevelt's. I exclusively get my shirts from the Roosevelt's. They are make the best clothes I've ever had in my life. I wear them all the time. It's like a shock that I'm not wearing the Roosevelt's. Uh, sh- but I did wear the Roosevelt's on stage at both my shows this weekend in Providence. I wore Roosevelt's Friday, Roosevelt's Saturday. The shirts are soft, stretchy, comfortable, like my dad's dick, and fresh as fuck, as you can already tell. And you can, and he wishes his shits were sh- soft, stretchy, and comfortable. Um, and you can make a statement when you wear the shirt shorts combo. Dude, the shirt, I got, I got one of the shirts. It's like, it's, uh, it's uh, like Chris Farley and Mike Myers, the Bears characters. I got Jurassic Park shirts, and the shorts are sick. Dude, Ro- the Roosevelt's. Literally, they got Star Wars shirts, Marvel, DC, Nickelodeon. If you've watched, and if you've ever come see me live or watch me on most podcasts, I'm wearing Roosevelt shirts. Okay, go check out the shirt I wore on the Joe Rogan show. It's awesome. So many people hit me up. Um, I've been wearing it for years. Um, I organically found it, um, and I love it. I'm a customer, and I'm so happy that they're sponsoring the pod. This is like really cool for me because I'm genuinely like, there's no bullshit. You've I have proof. I wear the shirts all the time, and if you like the results shirt, uh, if you liked all the results shirts that I'm wearing, you can go right now. This is why I love this company. They gave me a sweet discount. Go to RSV LTS. Okay, rsvlts.com slash uh, Chrissy Chaos. rsvlts.com slash Chrissy Chaos. And you can put in the promo code Chrissy Chaos at checkout for 20% off your first order. That's rsvlts.com slash Chrissy Chaos. Use code Chrissy Chaos at checkout for 20% off your first order. And by the way, I realize I just did that whole whole ad uh, saying results, and it's the Roosevelt's. The way you say that shirt company is the Roosevelt's, but sometimes <laughs> it looks like an E because they spell it R-S-V-L-T-S, and I'm an idiot, and I'm dyslexic. So it's the Roosevelt's, but it's R-S-V-L-T-S. T S 
R-S-V-L-T-S dot com slash Chrissy Chaos. Use the code Chrissy Chaos. 20% off your first order. I promise you, you're going to love these shirts. Take a picture of you in the shirt and send it to me. I want to know use that promo code. I encourage you to go to patreon.com slash Christy Comedy. Some of the best work of this podcast is done there and only there. $5 a month. I know times are tough. I know the economy's rough. $5 a month if you can afford it. If not, we'll see you when you can. It's all good. Um, we have uh, the fans come on. They can ask questions. That'll be on the podcast. We're going to start Zooming random fans into episodes that would only you only qualify for that at patreon.com slash Christy Comedy. We're going to start doing things where we give uh, discount codes to buy tickets to uh, or merch uh, at Patreon. So there's a lot of benefits there and over 75 hours now of footage that only live at patreon.com slash Christy Comedy. When we get to 6,000 Patreon members, we're going to have the Chrissy Chaos block party, and it's going to be dope. Thanks for your support. Keep going, bubs. All right, here, we're back in a new location. Um, this is chaos. Um, I, the, the prime minister, the ex-prime minister of Japan was assassinated um, last week or a couple of days ago, and it is wild, dude. It would be, it's like, you know, like a living former president, like, if they, I don't know if it's like Obama level, but if they assassinated like a Bill Clinton or somebody, like it's wild. Like, because I think, again, I don't know Japanese politics, but I am willing to learn. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but I, I feel like that he was a beloved guy. Now they're saying that he was assassinated because he was like some disgruntled ex military Japanese veteran. Um, thought he was like part of some like religious group or something. So there was, but wh what I think the bigger thing is, is like, you like politic to have a politician in a major first world country like Japan be assassinated. It, it, it feels just very eerie because it's like that's how World War One started. Mm -hmm. Like you know the, the, the Duke Ferdinand got assassinated, and then like things started to pop off, and and and, but it, it, the thing for me is like it's just showing you like how angry politicians are making people now like so angry that they're in 2022 knowing they're going to get caught footage everywhere sh murdering politicians so if it happens in japan it can kind of happen anywhere and i'm like you know like how and you know and and it, and it just shows you it goes to show you too like the gun stuff like it kind of happens everywhere because you would think if i sit in japan you know, if you're going to assassinate, like the first thing, because the first thing when I, when I saw that, when I was like, oh, president, ex-president Abe, I uh, forgot his name, uh, the prime minister of Japan got assassinated. I thought, like I think most of the country thought that, you know, somebody hit him with a ninja star. And <laughs> when I found out it was a gun, it was, it was sad and it was shocking. Because, like, this gun violence thing now is creeping in. And somebody else, there was a mass shooting, thinking, like, Denmark. There's, there's so many, like, it's happening it everywhere now. It was a homemade now. gun. It was a weird-looking gun. Yeah. You saw that? Yeah, because that's the thing. It's like, you know, with this, with this ever-expanding mass shooting gun violence, it's like, I just want to, like, talk to the rest of the world. Like, you don't have to copy everything Americans do. You can leave some stuff for just Americans. You're copying every damn thing we do, including the mass shootings. So just stop. That's our thing, and that should stay our thing. Dude, I was thinking this the other day. Why don't we just research who's about to mass shoot and recruit them to a mass shooting part of the army? Yes. Make because if, if you're if you're if your goal as a mass shooter is just to unleash terror and because you're mad because you're an incel, then let's have a mass shooting section of the army. I like that. I like that Give a lot. jobs, man, because now murdering is almost an influencer thing. It is. It is kind of, yeah. That's that's kind of like that might, that's like the last resort to go viral. If the podcast numbers continue to dwindle, that's what I'll have to resort to. Ooh. And yeah, I'll where, just. Yeah. Where should you do it? <laughs> where should I do my mass shooting? Um, the FBI is coming. Yeah, <laughs> no, 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 no. I, um, first of all, I, I wouldn't even know how to fucking uh, assemble the gun. I have no, I'd shoot you'd myself. The, oh my God. You'd be the worst. You'd have so much anxiety. You'd yeah, shoot like your pants probably. Yeah, I'd shoot my pants. I'd shoot myself in the foot. I, I just, you know, the fucking worst. Um, 
But it is, that was something that's shocking. I know it's all over the news, but it was shocking where I was like, man, like I remember seeing that guy too, that prime minister in Japan, because he was a big U.S. ally. I think he was always with Obama. I think he was even like cool with Trump. Like I think this guy was like supposedly like a good guy. And he got like. Dude, you saw Trump pop off on Elon? I saw that because the Twitter deal fell through. Called him a bullshit artist? <laughs> I am sad that Elon's that that deal fell through because I was like, oh, but I don't know the specifics of it. Something's going to come out that will make Twitter look so (laughs) useless. I think he figured out whatever's going on through their paperwork. Right. Well, doesn't it it, do you feel like Twitter's actually getting less and less popular now or do you feel like it's kind of. I just feel like I'm talking to robots. I don't even it just feels like like whatever. It feels nuts, dude. It feels nuts. Yeah, I feel like now there's uh, because I think that that's what Elon Musk cited as why he let go of the deal because there's so many bots on that that site that he was like, I can't you lie to me about how many users there actually are. Here's the question. Who gets assassinated here first, Elon or Bezos? (sighs) Who gets assassinated here first? If I had to guess, if I had to guess, I would. I would say Elon just because he has more baby mamas. Mm. Elon's got so many baby mamas. He just had two with an executive at his company. With an executive at his company while he's having sex with the other one. I think maybe when you get that rich or that powerful where it's like the women you just understand. Like he's got like almost like, um, what do they call it? Like a, 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 like a of women. Like um, what do you call it? Like a harem? A harem of women. I think that's what he has. And I don't think he has a piece. I just think every woman wants to fuck the smartest dude. It's like fucking, it, 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 literally, fucking Elon Musk is like fucking Thomas Edison. It's, he literally is our, t- wouldn't you want to fuck a guy that made a light bulb? I want to fuck him right now. I, dude, I want to dig up Thomas Edison's body and blow his skeleton. <laughs> Um, Patreon <laughs> Patreon questions As always at the end of every episode Patreon.com slash Christy Comedy That's the way to get involved in the show um, You can ask questions on the show We pick three or four that we love We yell out your name and it's all good So this one is Oh yeah and Venetia is reminding me I want to announce that I have new merch coming out Okay it's coming out very soon Right now we actually just put out a Chrissy Chaos Metro card shirt So go to chrisdcomedy.com Click on the new merch tab and get that shirt And then we got more new merch coming out and it's going to be dope It really is flying I'm excited about it So this one's from Caitlin spelled with a K K A I T L I N So Caitlin spelled with a K you're probably a lunatic um, If you could be alive During any history defining moment What would it be If you could be alive during any history de- Well, I always, I would think like the Declaration of Independence signing, like colonial history, like that's when I want to be alive. But really, dude, I would want to be alive when they invented ice cream. That's the history defining moment. I want to be alive when the moment whoever, whoever made ice cream, which I think was Tom Carvel. I think Tom Carvel. This guy to make ice cream? Yeah, I think soft serve. I think he made soft serve because I think ice cream used to come in. I think the story is, is ice cream used to come like in like big, ice you know blocks of ice and then his he was and he would be like delivering it and then his truck broke down on the side of the road and it started to melt and he was just hungry so he started eating the melting ice cream and he thought it was awesome and that's what he made soft serve I'm almost positive is that true um 1938 by F. McCullen and his son Alex developed the formula for soft serve. But I think Carvel, Tom Carvel, came up with the idea. Why do you know this? (laughs) Dude, I love that show, The Food That Built America. It's an awesome show. It's on the History Channel. The Food That Built America is a dope, dope, dope show. And if you're also looking for another recommendation, go to Netflix and watch Speshy Weshy. It's still up there. In Um, 1939, Carvel built the first ice cream truck machine thing ah okay yeah yeah something like that you're you're probably right from Mackenzie Willard Mackenzie Willard did you have a nickname growing up all or while playing sports my nickname growing up they would call me gums because I had big gums I had I was born with gingivitis and then in basketball they would either call me the black kids I played basketball with would either call me little Dirk uh, they would call me uh, mayonnaise or mustard. They would call me one of the mayonnaise or mustard condiment or Lil Dirk. It's so weird because Lil Dirk's now like the biggest rapper in the world. Yeah. It just is so weird. Cause, to call but you I was that. After, after Dirk Nowitzki, um, oh, that's why they would call God. me Lil Dirk. I love I, the photo you posted the other day. That was fun. Which one? Oh, of me tucking it back? You fully naked. Fully naked. <laughs> As a child. I, I thought it was going <laughs> to get taken down. But, well, no, but because I think I put the ticket link or the link that I put over my. Over the La Puss, I think that's why it stayed up. Because I, I really, with that, I, I could, 
I, I, it's really just my upper body. I'm happy it stayed up. Right. This is from Brianna Michelle. Sounds like a porn star. Who would play Homeless Pimp, Venetia, and T.T. Jerry in the movie of your life? Movie since the TV show didn't work out. Okay. So T.T. Jerry, let's start with T.T. Jerry. Shoot for the stars, John Leguizamo. John Leguizamo playing T.T. Jerry in drag, John Leguizamo. Now, I know in 2022 politics they're going to make a trans actor play her, which is bullshit. I want John Leguizamo. I want Ben Affleck. Ben Affleck. <laughs> I want Ben Affleck to play Venetia. <laughs> no, Venetia. Venetia, I think. I'd have, for Venetia, I think we would get, um, I think we would get to play Venetia. I mean, it's it's interesting to think about, and I know people are going to know what I'm going to say. It's interesting to think about um, um, the... Who do I, why am I blanking? Why am I blanking on our girl who went trans and became a boy? Oh, Elliot. Elliot Page. It's it's interesting to think about Elliot Page playing mm. Venetia or Homeless Pimp, but I'm not going to go with Elliot Page because I do want Elliot Page to play me. Um, but I think that Venetia, what about if we had somebody like, like you know who Rose Byrne is? She's British. Mm. She could play Venetia, or do we need like a younger? What about Zendaya? That's fun. How about Zendaya That's playing fun. Venetia? I could see that. Yeah, Zendaya, or we could have the trans kid from Euphoria play Venetia. There you go. Just so we can get some wokeness in there. Yeah, I'm sure she would appreciate that. Yeah, I think Zendaya <laughs> or the trans kid. Um, you know who I want to play myself? Who? The ugly kid from Stranger Things, the little weird annoying oh, yeah, nerd. Yeah, yeah, that That's kid would perfect. be good. That's perfect. That, that kid would be good, but we'll probably be um, Joaquin Phoenix will probably play you. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Joaquin Phoenix. <laughs> Shout out Logan Paul's house. Shout out Logan Paul's house. Okay, uh, then we got Kevin Creamer. He says, hey, Chrissy, two-part question. Did you know Napoleon was attacked by a horde of bunnies? And if you were in a similar situation, how many bunnies could you kill? Um, I did not know Napoleon was attacked by a horde of bunnies. Um, I don't think I would kill... I don't think I could kill a bunny. I don't think I could kill a living animal. Well, you killed that bee. God, I did kill that bee. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Insects are alive, even though, like, you don't think of it like that, but they are alive. And they're the weirdest thing. We're God to insects. Because oh we we, li we choose. Yeah. They live we, and die with us. pray to us. Who the fuck Dude, we're God to chickens. You ever think about that? We're the devil to chickens, I think. Yeah, we are. We are Satan to chickens. <laughs> I have a question for you. What do you got? Would you rather never shit again like your dad or your dick never get hard again? Would I rather never shit again like my dad or my dick never get hard again? Um, I would say I'd rather my dick never get hard again just so I don't get into any more problems. Okay. You know? Very responsible. This is what I'm saying. If my dick just didn't get hard, I, you know, there'd be no issues. I still think you might try to push that flaccid. Yeah, I would just... <laughs> I would try to shove my balls in somebody. <laughs> um, yeah, it's very interesting. So those are the Patreon questions. Um, I love doing that. I love doing that. I love, I love hearing what the fans are up to and have them asking me questions. Um, you know, I didn't take my allergy medicine for four days uh, in Providence, and my allergies weren't as bad as I thought. I think what happens is, and this is just society, and I'm a big victim of it, where we don't want to be dis inconvenienced or in discomfort at all when I realize like every time I take my clarity and yes my allergy symptoms go away but you're still taking a medicine that who knows what it's doing and where I just dealt with my allergies this week and I was like this is fine this is just who I am for these three days this is just what I'm and then doing when you go back to the medicine it might actually work yeah yeah the medicine I took my clarity this morning and I feel like this loopiness I feel I'm like oh this is how I feel every day because I didn't realize that like the real me like baseline me just has allergies. I'm a guy who I, I have, I don't have seasonal allergies. I have 12 months of allergies. Like I have, aller, I will have allergies in the winter. God loves you. God, <laughs> just a bootleg bullshit system. Dude, we um, have, um, I'm doing, I'm doing a, a tiger belly tomorrow. So this is because this episode comes out Tuesday. So it'll already be done oh, nice. right now. So if you watch old tiger belly, if you watched, if you're a Tiger Belly fan, Bobby Lee and Kalila's podcast, 
last week on Tiger Belly, they announced that they have broken up. They are broken up. They continue to do the podcast. So I am the first guest. I am the first guest on their new on on the podcast. Okay, and if you remember, last year when I went on Tiger Belly after we split the history of hyenas, Bobby and Kalila wore shirts, or Bobby Lee wore a shirt that said Team Giannis to fuck with me. Well, tomorrow, and we've got it made, Vanity is doing it, I, and it was just Homeless Pimp's idea, I got to give him all the credit. I'm going on to Tiger Belly with a button-down shirt, and I'm going to open it at some point in the podcast, and it will say Team Kalila. That's what I'm going to do. That's what happens. Payback is a bitch, baby. And it's going to be fun. Listen to Tiger Belly. Come see me on the road. ChrisDComedy.com. Uh, Burlington, Vermont. Montreal in July. Brea Improv in August. San Francisco and Chicago Theater in September. All new hour of material. The proudest comedy. Uh, the comedy I'm the most proud of in my career. All new hour of material. If you come to the show, you have not seen this stuff before. Come enjoy. ChrisDComedy.com. Patreon.com says ChrisDComedy. New merch out. New hour out. We're going to have fun. We're going to keep going. This is the summer of chaos. Let's go. Hopefully, fingers crossed, my dad takes his shit. <laughs>